right, everybody, welcome to another episode of Chamber Chat. I got a very special guest in the car today, and I'm gonna let her introduce herself, and we'll kick it off from there. All right, thanks, Simon. I'm Allison Lamplu with Lamplight Creative. Super happy to be here. For the dozens of people that watch these things. Hundreds and thousands. Yes, for the millions. Yes. Um, What's that? What's what's Lamplight Creatives? Yeah, so we're we're now completely virtual as an agency focused on on marketing. So you know, basically, when I when I started Lamplight, my my goal was to create a situation where um, somebody can come and get anything done. Yeah. But I'm not going to say that I'm an expert in anything because nobody is, right? So I need to create a network of people that yep. have different skill sets. So when somebody comes, we can do all the parts and pieces. So over the years, I've just uh, connected with and established relationships with creatives that everything from website design to SEO, graphic design, photography, videography. And so we've now got a network of about 20-ish people. Um, and so when a job comes our way, I kind of tap the person that has the right skill set. But what makes it really cool is when we build like a website, for example, if people need mm -hmm. branded mm -hmm. photography, if they need copywriting, if they need a video well, made, so that's it. Yeah. all of it. There's almost, uh, I was going to say there's nothing you can do, but right. that's probably true. Yes. Right? Yeah. For the most part, I really <clears throat> haven't had to kick back anything. Sometimes I have to go out and find somebody else who was not in the network that has a specific skill set that's being asked for. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I really don't kick things back out. So it's, it's sort of, you play the role of, um, like a almost like a project manager for the very much is that so. how it works yeah i'm involved with all of the projects and some more than others you know anytime sure. that the, it involves writing because that's my background yep. so i love websites because i do most of the copy right um but yes i'm always involved with making sure that everybody is on task and getting all the pieces that the creative needs the creatives don't really have to talk much with the clients i mean some situations sure. obviously if you're a photographer you need to be there and meet with the client but for the most part i take care of everything so the creative can just focus on what they do and that's so I mean this is sort of a I mean I'm sure there are other agencies like this around sure. around the state or country but this is kind of unique here yeah. um, how, why why this why do you go this route because it's yeah. cool well when I was working in marketing I was with LBCC in the extended learning department prior to this one of the things that and in that department we work with corporate training and community education so part of my role in marketing was going out into the community talking to business leaders finding out what classes they wanted maybe we were going to be using a space to bring right. a class but what i realized was after i was there having the meeting and then we were complete I would usually get tapped with questions yeah. like, hey, you know, I just, I want to pick your brain. I have this idea. I don't know where to go. <laughs> right. I don't know who's good. Or, you know, I go there and I don't know what they're saying. You go to a print shop and they've got all of these, these phrases that they use. And if you don't speak the lingo, right. you get confused, overwhelmed. And sometimes you, your project stops before it starts. Yeah. So that's when I started realizing it was one of those things where I didn't actually set out to do this. It was just like, you know, there's a void clearly. Mm -hmm. And I, I can fill it. I've been managing businesses for over over a decade, a district in, in one in one scenario. And so I had I knew I had the skill set yeah. to, to, to run the business and manage it. I was obviously, you know, nervous about the idea of like, okay, I'm now gonna be solely responsible for my <laughs> paycheck. Like that's scary. Right, but right, right. but as far as the, the project and the skill set needed, I knew I knew I had it. And and the cool thing I would imagine for the the creatives that you use is it's not they're not sort of all within one agency it's not oh well mm -hmm. it's a slow day today they can do their own thing as well right they're, absolutely they're that's independent oh yeah if yeah. everybody is and yeah. that makes it really easy to work yeah. together because they don't have you know non-compete clauses number right. one you know if you're working with another agency you, you can't always work with someone else but you know they work on their own time some of them work at night some of them work on the weekends some of them are working at five o'clock in the morning like yeah. whatever they want to do um never had an issue with people not finishing on timelines that we have like they're yeah absolutely i'm supporting other business owners essentially right? yeah well, that's exactly what i was yeah. gonna say so and the nice thing about that is let's say um we'll use the example of photography if you have your one photographer in your one business and you have other jobs going on you would essentially have to turn that job away then right so now Correct. you're just like hey i'll go to photographer b yes or c or you know however it works yeah and i do have multiple people with the same skill set in the network for that exact reason and there are times where somebody just says i'm i'm at capacity i can't do it yeah. and then i have somebody else yeah but it also makes it really easy for them because they're not 
they're not having to do anything for lead generation. It's just like they're in yeah, the network and right. like I just call one day and I'm like, hey, you want a job? You know, so <laughs> it, it, it works out pretty well for everyone. So how do you how do you manage your time? How's your how's your general day look then? I mean, obviously it varies all over the place. Yeah. But. Well, now I have a real tough commute. I just wake up and I walk upstairs. <laughs> um, so okay. that's amazing. Yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> um, but you know, I, it really it varies, and actually I love that. It's always something new. You know, as projects come and go, and we complete other projects, then there's something new. So. What I've done is I've figured out my my scheduling. Like obviously, running a business means you have to do things for your own business on top yep. of other people's businesses. For sure, for sure. So I uh, I kind of block out days. My Monday is my lamplight day. That's when I create content for social media, for our email campaigns. Right. I you know do fun things like balance QuickBooks. You know <laughs> those business kinds of owner things. Stuff. Yes, um, grown up stuff. <laughs> absolutely. And then my Tuesday through Thursday have a lot of meetings. Um, my consultation clients that I have on retainer that I meet with every week. Mm -hmm. Those are usually fall within Tuesday to Thursday. And then Fridays I block out for content creation when I'm writing content for websites because what I learned was, you know, when you have to really think about that kind of stuff and be thoughtful oh, yeah. and then you have to break in an hour because you have a meeting and then you have the meeting and then you have to start again, it, it makes it really difficult. So it took me a couple years to figure out like what what does my schedule need to look like for the for the most productivity and that's kind of where I'm at. Well, and, and so this business probably, and obviously there's not no transition, but when COVID hit, you know, it sort of, I mean, it probably didn't affect you as much. I mean, it's not like you had a building that yeah. you're managing and people coming in and all that mm -hmm. good stuff, right? Yeah, I, I, I gotta say, I, I know there's a lot of people that did not have the same experience, sure. and so I don't wanna be like real excited about it, but like it actually really but helped it matters. the yeah. business. Sure. Um, because what happened was, Everybody realized when they they didn't have a solid setup online, they did not have the digital presence that they needed. Right. They didn't have the websites, they didn't have the social campaigns, they didn't have the email funnels, like whatever it was, they needed it. So websites for the last two years were our biggest our biggest line item. Like we had probably four to five websites at a time for the yeah. last couple years we were building. And what's interesting is I noticed specifically this year it shifted and now people have the digital assets and they want to uh, run SEO campaigns, they want to run Google ads, they want to set up their, their, you know, their Facebook leads, whatever it is. Um, and so it's interesting to see, okay, people got the stuff. They took a couple years to get the things they needed yeah, and now sure. it's about optimizing those things and making sales. And, and do you think that shift will change? I mean, it's always evolving, yeah. right? But I mean, yeah. I think enough people were set up, at, you know, through through COVID and mm -hmm. by necessity to yep. stay in business at some point, yep. right? So if I if I didn't have an online presence, I sure as heck better have one now. And yeah. is that that's not going away? I don't think you know. I mean, right? You, who you never who know, knows? Right? But sure. my my thought is no because uh, you know there's people still currently that are shutting down their offices mm -hmm. and they're keeping their teams virtual um, they found ways to make it work and realize that they're actually saving a lot of money that way and so I really think that it makes sense for a lot of businesses of course you have a brick and mortar where you're selling products to people yeah. or a restaurant it's not not in the right. cards for you but I think that now that everybody has gotten used to it it's become the norm that it would actually be more taxing to go backwards yeah you know I remember you know I've been using zoom for years many years prior to the pandemic and I remember offering to people to jump in a, a zoom meeting you know instead of driving to wherever <laughs> and people would be like oh no no it was like How this, this huge function? thing it was like sorry I didn't mean to pry you know yeah and now you never hear that people yeah. have figured it out right and so and again you guys are a perfect example of this um, People working from home, I think, you know, if you're a if you're a building owner, you know, mm -hmm. big large space owner down downtown or in any of big cities, mm -hmm. I'd be a little nervous now because people have shown that the yep. productivity from home, you know, yep. obviously there's hiccups and bumps and bruises along the way, but yeah, I mean that's effectively what you're doing. Yes. I don't know what. How are you working from home? I'm great, and I'm also always great. Uh, or? I I actually really like to work. I don't listen to like music. I don't have any background sound. I Pretty really like silence, okay. and I'm very disciplined about it. I am in a situation where I don't have kids running around. My <laughs> my only office mate is my chocolate lab, you know, okay. and she's great. She's okay. you know she her, she has tough days and sometimes starts scratching her back like in the middle of a Zoom <laughs> call, and I'm like I'm so sorry, excuse me. Hang on one second. <laughs> yes. Right. Right. Uh, but you know, other than that, I don't have a lot of distractions, and I'm very good about keeping myself on task. So yeah, I think.
think that would be um, that would be a, a learning curve that a lot of people might yeah. struggle with, right? Yes. Like, yeah. Do you find you you joked earlier about your commute being going upstairs or downstairs or yeah. you know wherever? Do you, is it is that work for you? Like it has to be separate. You couldn't just like roll in in your pajamas and just be like, hey, here we go. We're we're gonna go. Is it a clear? You oh know, yeah. It's a separate room. I get oh, dressed yes. specifically for it. Yes. Gotta because have that. I feel like you always perform better when you look and you feel your best. Yeah. So yeah, like I'll put on some lipstick and head upstairs and like, you know, you know, sometimes <laughs> I might have yoga later. pants on, but my top portion <laughs> always looks, you know, right, always right, looks right. together. Right. Um so so yeah. Because I think that I think mm -hmm. that's I think that would be something I, I this is shoot uh, towards the start of the pandemic um, I was on a uh, webinar and it was about exactly that having the discipline and setting those boundaries mm -hmm. where if you're working from home that's great it seems like a dream but not everybody could pull that off that's correct you know so yeah. productivity yeah. can go down unless you really separate it and yeah. it's funny you mentioned that like getting dressed differently mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it matters yep you know yep absolutely um, you talked about um, your your um, uh, the people who you work with, mm -hmm. um, who are not just clients of yours, but the you know the uh, creators, yep. the content creators um, for you guys. How do you how do you get involved with that? Are you looking? I mean, you're always looking for people, right? Yeah, absolutely. I always got an open door because I never know what's going to come our way, and, yep. and I like to have a couple of people with with similar skill sets. A lot of the people I I either worked with prior, like some of the contacts were people that I worked collaborated with when I worked at LB, you sure, know, in marketing. Sure. Some people are are people that were in my personal network that had a skill set and and you know and we can go ahead and collaborate um and some people i just meet through other people yeah. you know through other creatives he'll be like you know i have i have a friend that does this and i think they would be really beneficial and so right. then we meet and we talk about what that looks like and uh, if we vibe well then then we bring them on for a project so That's super cool yeah it's it's good to hear you you're doing well we i mean we remember we started our Shoot, you remember right when I started this, like three years ago, that kiosk You came thing? in right about the same time I was starting. Like, that's right, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And we talked about that kiosk thing down down in yes. the chamber, and then all hell broke loose. It right, was just like, it's okay, like well, okay, see you in a couple yeah, years. <laughs> I won't be talking to anybody. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's 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 really cool to hear some of the stuff you've been doing, and people are getting to use you and getting to be, you know, just, just experience the sort of, again, the, just the breadth of what you bring from a marketing perspective. It's super cool. Thank you. It's super cool. Um, so yeah, fancy business. Oh yay, everything's great. Um, cool. Part of Chamber <laughs> Chat. How about that for a smooth transition? Oh yeah, it's nice. Well done. <laughs> um, uh, part of Chamber Chat is, uh, you know, yeah, it's it's Lamplight Creatives. Everything's everything's cool. This it, but there's a person behind that. There is. You want? Should we learn more about you? Um, sure. Okay. <laughs> cool. So I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot off a, a bunch of questions uh, okay. to you. You can answer them however you want. Some, some we may need follow-up questions on. Depending. Okay. All right. All right. I'm in. Where were you born? Oh, uh, I was here, born here. Okay. Dallas. Okay. Yes. I, I lived here for the first 17 years, okay. and then I spent 14 years in California mostly between the Bay and LA, but I okay. did have a short stint in Nashville and Vegas. Whoa. Nashville? Yes. Why in, well, first off, why Vegas? Why <laughs> anybody would get, no, no offense Vegas, it's a great place to visit. Yeah. You lived in Vegas? What's that like? Well, yeah, we, it's wild. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you know, when I was in LA, it was, it was easy for, to go up to Vegas for, you know, it was a couple yeah. hour drive. Sure. People did it all the time. And so I just had an opportunity to be up there and just try it out. I was like right. in transition between apartments. It was only a couple of months. Right. Um, I don't really think it's a place to, to be highly productive in the long run. <laughs> no. and so it was a good extended vacation. I right. Say. right. And then Nashville, Nashville's cool. Yeah. I, I've been to Nashville a number of times. I used to live down in uh, Florida and Alabama. Okay. Yeah. And so Nashville, you know, it's not too far Nash away. Nash Vegas. Yeah, it's exactly. almost like, so the, yes. It's, it's a cool town. Yeah. It's yeah. very cool. What, what would you do there? I was right on Broadway. I worked for a chain of gift stores that were the mom and pop. They were all owned by the same couple. And then they were all on Broadway. Actually, for anybody that's been there, if you walk down Broadway and you see the Elvis statues, those are all the same gift stores. Those are the ones that I managed. Oh. So I was the personnel manager um, right. for them. And so I would walk between the four of them all day and do what I needed to do. And I was always on Broadway and seeing all the all the tourists. And it was really cool because you heard languages from all around the world oh, all yeah. the time. Like, yeah. the, I mean, uh, 
Nashville. I'm, I we called it Nash Vegas because it's basically is without yeah. casinos. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, also pretty wild. And the things that you catch people doing because there's a lot of inebriated folks walking around yeah. keeps things real spicy. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> just how it is. So yes, like the Las Vegas Strip. Uh, yes. Um, if if money wasn't an issue, right, for mm -hmm. anybody, and if you know if you could if you weren't doing what you were doing now. What would you be doing? Any job in the world? Oh, I would just be traveling. Just be like a blogger? A, a vlogger, oh, maybe. Oh, that's right, vlogger. Yes. All right. Um, you know, something of that nature or, you know, going around and uh, writing reviews about different re resorts or different places that you can stay. Like, I love traveling. Yeah. It has been something that has always been part of me. My family growing up, I didn't even recognize that other people didn't go on vacations every time there was a spring break or a summer break right, or a right. winter break. Um, and so I feel really lucky that I got to have those experiences and then carry them through. And still now I, I take, you know, two to three vacations a year yeah. um, to different places within the States and, and outside of. And so I plan to keep on doing that. So if I didn't have to worry about, but you know, I actually have a business that's virtual, so I'm not gonna lie. Right. Sometimes I am working when I'm on vacation. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that, and it still, it, it, it feels too, too, too neat. And people don't. <laughs> and, and again, you, you wouldn't notice, right? I mean, we talked earlier about, uh -huh. um, you know, before we, before we were uh, recording about, you know, being able to just pick up and go. Yep. Right. Yep. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, speaking of travel, um, where's the best place you've ever been? Oh. If you could go back again. Oh, yeah. Uh, Tanzania, when we went on a safari there. Best experience uh, of lifetime. Lifetime. My oh, my. Safari. I, yes. I don't care where. Do it, get it done. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, it was actually, it was pretty funny. This was back in like um, my early 20s. And my mom says to me, I want to take you on a vacation of a lifetime. Name it where you want to go. And I immediately, without skipping a beat, like just blurted out the Serengeti. Yeah. And then there was like yes. this pause, and we were both like, but where exactly? We knew it was Africa, but like, <laughs> where exactly is the Serengeti? I grew up watching National Geographic, yeah, so yeah. I would like, I wanted to be there when yeah. I had seen. See the lion hunt and all that, the wildebeest oh, and, and all that. Oh, and we saw. We absolutely, and what's great about it is like when you're on the, the safari, the, the road is the two ruts that are in the yeah. middle of the Serengeti. And so anything that's in the way, you wait until they move. There's yeah. not like getting out and moving or taking it. So Best we not had, to get out, in fact. No, it's highly encouraged. Don't not, get out. Do not. Um, so we had a situation one day where uh, there was a mama lion with two cubs and yeah. she was teaching them how to stalk. And we could see the gazelle down in the distance oh, and they cool. were using the road and so they were, I mean stalking is very slow it's yeah. a very slow process I have learned Especially with two young yes so it was about 45 minutes or so that they they stalked and we were front row seat watching it all happen and I have to be honest I was extremely happy when they missed the gazelle because I was like I don't know if I'm ready for this <laughs> I know there's a circle of life but yeah. um, but we did show up to a lion that had just was eating a zebra um, and there was a fresh kill I mean there was just like it was everywhere it was there was that, I mean, it was incredible. Elephants so, walking in front of us, giraffes sticking their face man. in them. So I, I, I've, I've done, shoot, I don't know, 50 or 60 of these things. And, or, I, you know, I usually ask kind of the, you know, the location question. And you're the first person who's been on literally my bucket list place. Do that I would be something? my answer. Yes. <laughs> I'll figure something out. <laughs> okay. You have to introduce me to your mom so she can take me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it'll be good. <laughs> How about, um, flip that around then, um, bucket list place that you haven't been? Oh, the pyramids, Egypt. Ooh, oh my good goodness, one. absolutely. Just your history buff, just kind of that I, sort of I thing, am, or? and I'm very intrigued by, you know, the how did it happen and what technology did they use and how did they know the things? And like, I love watching that kind of stuff and learning about it. There's also, um, I, this is, shoot, I know, I'm probably getting this wrong, but about a year ago, I, I was reading a document or uh, watching a documentary and it said some, some of these pyramids are literally like down to the inch. Yeah, like, like you can't square. even put a piece of paper through them. Yeah. Yes. But like perfectly aligned. And you think like, you yeah. think that kind of feat, what that would take nowadays with all the technology we have. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, that's a good one. Thank you. That's a, that's a good one. Um, when you travel, you, you eat, right? Mm -hmm. You gotta eat some stuff. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite dish? It's your death row meal. I gotta find a different way to ask this. <laughs> like, okay, it's your last ever meal. You're gonna die later. What's that last, what's on that plate? What's it look like? Oh, it's a charcuterie board. 
Really? Absolutely. Okay. I love cheese and crackers and all the accessories that go Out with them. Out of everything, them. though? I mean, I love it. It's kind of food porn to me. Okay. <laughs> I think that might be the first time anyone said that answer. <laughs> I mean, wow! I am just like yeah. You you were like up please. here. Yeah. No, no, that's that's not a great answer. You're down. You 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 plummeted just then. You were doing so well, and then you pulled that out. Sure. Okay. Second best food then. Mm. Um. Are you a foodie? Do you like it? I mean, I. <laughs> well, your favorite food is a cheese board, I mean, so I, no. Seriously, I'm trying to think. I mean, my boyfriend would, would definitely say bread, any kind of bread. I love bread. What you're so. saying is you're a cheap date. I, I would, well, it's, are it's, there drinks? Because yes, those okay. get expensive. Yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> those add up because I got to have something with my cheese board. Oh, that's awesome. Um, what about something that you've eaten uh, that you are like, hell no. We're Oysters, not eating that. you. Oh, really? Ew, ew, ew. Bad experience or just... I just can't even. So I went texture. to an oyster fest back in the day. This was my first, like, full-on oyster experience. Oh, you went big. Oh, right? yeah. And I tried... They had oysters cooked or not cooked any way you can imagine. And I tried multiple. And, I mean, it was a little guttural. Like, I can't. Yeah. And for days, it was like I felt like the ocean was in my mouth. And, like, <laughs> I just... So, nope. <laughs> That's... That is that is not it's an a hard un, no. that's an that's not an uncommon answer. That's that's was it a texture thing or a smell or all of the above? All of or, it. Really? Yeah. Just like all oysters. of it. And the texture is something to not be yeah. desired. Yeah. yeah. Not cool. Mm -hmm. Not good at all. So uh, after you've had your uh, cheese board uh, for your last <laughs> meal, um, we're uh, that's so weird. Um, <laughs> What if uh, uh, you're sitting out and you? And it's perfect. It's summertime. You're sitting out out the back of your house. You're in a you're in a lounge chair. It's nice, relaxing. You've had a you've had a busy day. Mm -hmm. You turn on some music. Mm. What are you What are you listening to? I drive in silence 100 percent of the time. I never even have the radio music on. Really? Nothing. I love silence. We don't get it very often, Simon. Like we're always some of, overwhelmed. Some of the with weirdest stimulus. answers I've ever heard on Chamber <laughs> Chat. What type of music you like? None. The sound of silence. <laughs> uh, so I do like music when when the occasion is right. And okay. generally speaking, hip hop. Really? Yes. I okay. got that answer a lot. People are like, I would have guessed like, you know, Mozart or something. I'm like, mm -mm. like this is like taking so mm -mm. many turns. I know. It's yep. Okay, so may, keep may, you guessing. maybe maybe <laughs> Okay, so maybe music's not 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 the thing. What about a uh, favorite movie? Oh, I love movies. I am kind of a movie buff. Okay, um, go on. Hit me with something good. Oh, well, there's so many different kinds of movies like um I mean, anytime I would obviously, you know, back in the day, Titanic was like the movie, right? And if you look at my Instagram feed, there is multiple photos of me on the bow of the boat, just with my hands out, right. just waiting for Leo, right? right? Yep, so, yep. Uh, you know, but I mean, that was that's kind of old school. I really love, you know, if we're talking about a feel good, like The Holiday is a good movie. Right. Um, you know, I it has a good amount of like humor and like romance and like the whole genre? adventure. Are you a, are you a, a more of a like rom com a lot of crime type stuff though, and like oh. mysteries and like figuring okay. figuring things out throughout the movie. Okay. Um, really like a lot of different kinds. Just saw Maverick in the theater not too it's long amazing. ago. Amazing. It's pretty good. Yeah. I actually I got to admit I had tempered expectations for it. Same. Because I was like, that's kind of an iconic movie, right? Yep. Yep. Usually but you don't do it better the second time around. I would say this. this Nailed it. This was good. Yes. This was really good. Um, Olivia Newton John. She died. Today? Wait, you didn't know this? No. Oh, man. I know. I'm breaking this news to you TMZ right now. TMZ hasn't come across my feet <laughs> yet. <laughs> no, she, yesterday. She oh, died yesterday. Geez. I know. We watched Grease last night. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, sad stuff yeah. when that, that happens. Sorry. That's a first as well, breaking yeah. bad news. There we go. Just, just. This has been a good one. <laughs> this, is, this has been really, really good. Hey, if you were, um, okay, so you're sitting there in silence with your cheese board, um, not really doing much. Wow, it makes me sound so it's, interesting. Uh, I promise you she's really creative, but just apparently not in her own life. Um, so, um, and you got to invite somebody over for dinner. Anyone mm. in the world. Oh. Celebrity, famous, it can be anybody. Uh, Who's well, it going to be? I mean, iconically, Jane Goodall. I would love to sit Ooh. down and chat with Jane Goodall. Yeah. Like absolutely, and yep. hear about all of her stories. Okay. If you know, 
if we're just talking about having meeting somebody of celebrity status, Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, we're back to Titanic. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think we're, you're picking up on theme here. Okay. Yes. Okay. The young version or the older version? You know what? Any version works for me. <laughs> don't, don't care. <laughs> don't care. Not the uh, Gilbert Grape one. You yeah, know, but, maybe not. A little older than that, but <laughs> but that'd be cool. Yes. Okay. Are you like a you're you're down? You're following all his movies. You... I'm a big fan. Yeah. I'm you know I'm a big fan of his acting capabilities on top of just you know. He's nice him. to look at. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Actually, you know what's funny? Uh, he gets, you know, uh, obviously, he's a good looking dude. Yeah. But uh, he's got some chops too. Like, he can act. Absolutely. It's cool. And in an range of movies. Yeah. He's not, you know, he's not typecasted like, you know, Tom Cruise, yeah. for example. Like, yeah. you always know what you're going to get. Yes. Um, someone from history that you would like to meet. Somebody who's long gone, long. Well, and somebody in the past. You know, I've always thought about George Washington, and not for any other reason, but to really know, was he really that smart and amazing of a dude? <laughs> or was he just smarter than everybody else who wasn't educated? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> he was like the, the smartest dumb guy. Right? I mean, I, mean, I wonder. It's, it's worth asking. Yes, so. All right. Yeah. That, that's fair. Yeah. We, we've had a couple, a couple answers where they're like, Genghis Khan. Oh. Like, I'd just like to sit down with him and be like, dude, what's up? Yeah. Did you need a hug? What was... What is happening in your life? <laughs> Napoleon, let's be honest. Was it really? <laughs> yes. I mean, come on. You got a complex about something there, Napoleon. What is the deal? What is the deal? Hey, uh, as we uh, as we wrap this uh, wrap this show up here, um, I got to talk to you about uh, obviously you know COVID has been. Uh, I, I think it's fair to say, regardless of where you where you landed at the end of it, it's been a rough couple of years. Yeah. 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 Not, not, not a highlight reel. It's been a huge learning opportunity. Exactly. Yeah. So actually, in that vein, um, it's easy to be like, oh, COVID was terrible. There's that. Business wise, mm -hmm. and then personally. Mm -hmm. What's uh, what's some good that's come out of uh, come out of this disaster that's been COVID? Yeah, I think business-wise, definitely made me realize that a traditional business wasn't something that you have to fit into anymore. You know, I moved my my agency to be completely virtual. Yep, I yep. have people that are all over that are working under one virtual roof, um, and that existed before, but it's not it's not looked upon as odd anymore. Um, That's good. So yeah, so being able to unconventionally be conventional. You don't have an office? Right. Where are we going right. to meet? And everybody's okay with that. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so that's been amazing. Um, and people's willingness to engage from afar also before it was like, oh no, I just, I really want to be able to meet you for coffee or whatever the thing is. Yeah. Personally, um, I would say, you know, things like my dad for example he doesn't live in the state and so we 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 talk on the on the phone we used to talk on the phone normally yeah but now we take walks together every week and it's just something that we did to stay connected during the pandemic huh. but it's like he actually didn't live here to begin with why did we have to have that excuse to do that but it like forced us to like make this this routine and so you know i load That's up good. my dog and we head out and, and once a week probably for about an hour or so we're walking together that's cool. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. That's really, that's, uh, that's good answers. Thank you. Way better than your earlier ones. <laughs> there was one question. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Well, oh, I mean, the music one was weird as well, but uh, anyway, <laughs> carry on, carry on. Um, hey, super awesome talking to you. Uh, Same. Oh, you know what? Wait, if people, we should probably tell people how to get a hold of you. Oh, sure, yeah. yeah. that might yeah. be helpful. I don't want to forget to Just, plug my yeah. own yes. <laughs> Give us, how, uh, yeah, so how do they, uh, yeah. Yeah, so Lamplight Creatives, plural, with an S, dot com is the website. My contact info is there, but also, easy to remember, Allison at Lamplight Creatives, that is a double L, um, is my email address shoot me an email and uh, I'm happy to chat with anyone. I basically, when it comes to, to a new client, I always jump on a 30 minute discovery call yeah. and we talk about what your goals are and there's no obligation from either direction. And so um, I'm happy to chat. And I promise you, you will not be sorry. It's super cool. Unless you want to go out to lunch and you don't like charcuterie, then it's <laughs> yeah. problem. Well, it won't cost you much. We <laughs> <laughs> just got a block of cheese and I think you're golden. What a nightmare. <laughs> She's really good at what she does. <laughs> Uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. And uh, we will see you guys on another episode of Chamber Chat. See you later. <laughs>